Your body betrays your degeneracy. It is my task to keep the degenerate drunks from entering the arbor. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? Stop it! You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman and your pedomorphic friend. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. I can see you were once an athlete, then deteriorated in your twenties. It is typical of your upload group. Let's blame the failed education system and leniency towards degenerates in your homeland. That is right. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. But, while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. Both of you. But, while I am gone, someone must stand guard on the bridge. That someone needs to be you. The corpse has been removed from the tree. Stand down and congratulate yourself. You have sided with Ray's victory today. Do not presume this has drastically altered our race dynamic. True, I said nothing about our personal dynamic. That has altered. A little. Another fit of criminal rage. Who are you? In your own words, you must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. Good. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. Rabid animal, you should be put down. I will not be the one who gets your stink on me. You know the words. I am a degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate drunk. It must be neurodegenerative. <laughs> you never learn. You are a poor player of physical chess. Good. Now go before you enter cardiac arrest. Yes, that is precisely what it means, homunculus. This is not going to happen any other way. Fine. Goodbye. Return to your degeneracy. It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinacle. Be calm, I'm Sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to all rule. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? This display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct. But it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Your body continues to betray your degeneracy. Yes, al -Ghul. You have succumbed to al -Ghul. You reek of it. An invisible sword of al -Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. This is a fabrication the alchemists of Yizot and Bashir and the Rolam al Rul have fed your people. Go on believing in it, race loser. Correct, my small skull servant. al Rul is an ancient Ilmaran poison, a parasitic fungus that has colonized your race. It is a trick the desert pygmies played on you for humiliating them and stripping them of their land. Why don't you have another drink? Your features are not yet congenitally deformed enough. Good. 
There is a frit nearby. Congratulate yourself with another drink. Your features are not yet congenitally deformed enough. Correct, my small skull servant. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the am sandwich race is waning. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is Al Ghul. You are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little of yourself remains. I doubt it, my microcephalic race servant. Your life and the life of your race revolve around Al Ghul. It has everything to do with why you're here. Servitude to Al Ghul does not explain everything. There are other reasons for your race descent. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. No. I have heard about it on the radio. I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulumbuir are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Simonese women walk into the grey mass on Ile de Fantôme waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Look at my craniology. I am the pinnacle of my haplogroup. The pink blob is a bad example, even of yours. It saddens me. You were once a noble and powerful race, willingly calling yourself a am sandwich. How far the Occidental Aplo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. Jerking motions, signs of a late stage neurodegenerative disorder. How far the Occidental Aplo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Aplo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am sandwich race is waning. The ethanol fungus is deep within your nervous system, pulling the strings. You are merely its pupa now. I see no hope for you or your kind. Last we saw, your race was being superseded by the Semenese. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Jam. Individualism. You have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs? Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. 
He has the will to confront international capital, which is something your race naivistic communists never did. Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital, something your race naivistic communists never did. Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront international capital, something your race naivistic communists never did. <laughs> Idiotic communism is the single greatest contributor to your race descent. Everywhere around you, the fruits of its failure to challenge the world order. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted diseases, above all, rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? Of course you are, Revacholian man. The failure of communism to challenge the world order is the core of your race fate. All around you, the fruits of its defeat. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted disease. Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. Offshoots of the Seminese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. So it was. You bested me in race combat to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning enemy. I will go and remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. So it was. You surmounted the harbor wall in a display of athletic prowess to reach my superior. Then had him give me an order. I salute your cunning and I will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. Listen to your little friend. He is wise in his childlike way. His mysterious race may yet prove fierce competition to my heroic haplogroup. Babe, see that they stay here the whole time. Farewell, ham sandwich. You are a union man from now on. And what you had to do was to become a union man for all to see. <laughs> Rock and roll is moribund. Only Koikos listen to it anymore. There is no life left in it. My people abandoned it long ago. It leads only to neurogenerative herpes and heroin overdoses. <laughs> of course it does. You are a degenerate individualist and a rock and roll rebel. A pawn of international finance. Just like the rest of your ham-colored race. Stop explaining yourself. No one cares about your beliefs. The conversation has moved on. Tell me, what degenerate subculture has made you dress in this shameful way? Meshed stoically looks to the distance, in silence. What you need is to come to terms with extinction. 
and never get in that dead body down from the tree. What you need is to come to terms with extinction and never getting into this harbor. <laughs> I can see that. The Simonese are the South Island race. Haplogroup A for A. The rightful masters of the Insulindian archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. The South Island race. Haplogroup A4A. We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian archipelago. We descend from the Areopagites of ancient Pericarnassus and arrived here 4,000 years ago. Millennia before you. We are the future. That is all you need to know. Good. I'm from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Revachol. The city is central to the Simony strategy. Spreading through its trade networks, our culture will dominate the world. Yes, you have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. And never getting that dead body down from the tree. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. And never getting into the harbor. You have heard enough about our phylogenetic secrets for today. You have extinction to come to terms with. Think upon it. Your pedomorphic friend has quick wits. A protruding occiput and an indented zygomatic bone. You should keep him close. The congenital defect of farsightedness does not render him a complete invalid. He still has the use of his mind. Race is reality. That is understandable. The previous racist did not pose an immovable obstacle in entering the harbor. That is understandable. The previous racist was probably an occidental and did not prove a real adversary. Your pedomorphic friend is right. You should leave here with your tail between your legs, contemplating race extinction. I am an immovable obstacle. Your silence betrays your inferiority. You do not have a reply. You should enter a deep race slumber. Perhaps in 4,000 years, there is need for a servile homunculus. Babe, thanks. But I got this. The size of the earlobes is not a real craniometric criteria. Everyone knows this. Yes, you exhibit forward projection of the jaw, indicative of schizophrenia and sexual inaccountability. From a purely aesthetic standpoint, the dimple in your jaw makes you look like a baby. This is not craniometry, just an observation. It is impossible to see any more of your bone structure. It is covered in the ravages of Al-Ghul. From what remain of your features, I can see fleshy lips, baldness of the head, and long arms relative to lower limbs. This leads me to conclude, you are not a police officer. You are a common criminal, an offspring of murderers and sailors from Sur la Clé and Vesper, and possibly even the degenerate sheep herders of Ubi. You do not wish to be judged because you are a genetic blob of polycultural deformities. This is understandable. Correct. Your racial heritage is uninteresting. It is the same as all Rivasholians. 
Your parents and their parents made the decision to reproduce while under the influence of al Ghul. That is the only reason you are here. Do not be naive. I know the answer to the great race enigma. Why would I share it with a deformed infant? You do not have the devotion for servitude. You will make due with your primitive theory. I know the answer to the great race enigma. Why would I share it with a deformed infant? You do not have the devotion for servitude. There are three categories of race. Tip A, the heroic races. Tip B, the servile races and the vile CF race cauldron of pederasty. Which one do you need education on? I am not the first line of defense. I am the last. In addition, these so-called hardy boys are an effeminate clique of bodybuilders. Their company is spiritually degrading. The hardy manlets are on the pay of the company. I answer to the union alone. And I do this out of race heroism. Finance is an alien concept to the Simonies. Now leave me be. I must luxuriate in the company of my woman. <laughs> ah, fine. They have recently fallen under the influence of a possibly sexually perverted female vagrant and a narcotics peddler. It's shameful. Find out for yourself, endomorphic blub. There is no other way to accomplish anything. Racecraft is the only way. You are obviously a liberal, Sayolite. A polyculturalist. I can see it from your love of microtechnology and your sartorial choices. Do not deny your friend the truth you have denied yourself. A receding genetic pool has led the mound on reprehensible street parades. In mound cities like Stadskanal and Vredefort. Wearing wooden clogs on their feet and little green tassels on their hats. I knew you would go straight for the vile cauldron. Everyone does. You need to first learn about Tip A and B to appreciate the depravity of the chimeric races. The moun are proof that you can have too much occidental racial purity and tassel-centric culture. Inbreathing has led to a lactose intolerant subrace whom no one can take seriously. Those are the Simonese the Areopagit, and the Occidentals, excluding the Maun, of course. The Maun are riddled with eczema to the point where they find it impossible to smile. They are all lactose intolerant, a common result of inbreathing. You know them by the names of their nation-states. The Oranese, the Gotwaldians, and the Königsteiners. My people simply call them Maun. The Vespertines and Messinians of Vesper and Messina. The ancient Meteorans of Meteo by the Golden Pisantic Sea. The Suren of Sur la Clé, and even the North Königsteiners. All have Tip A race propensities. The other large Mondial Civilisation, the Mesk are too yellow and oleaginous to count as a heroic race. True, they are violent and expansionist, but they have a glandular problem, overproduction of sebum. Sebum is leaking into their brains, making them listen to el mariachi music and eat toxic minced meat-based food, which in turn only produces more sebum. As proven by the Maun and the Mesk, Occidental Tip A is in retrograde. 
The Simonese and the Areopagite are on the ascent. The indigenous people of this, the Insulindian archipelago. The Simonese inhabit the southern islands. I am Simonese, from the stock of Ulumbuir on Ile de Fontaume. The Areopagites are the master race of the Ilmaran deserts. The Simonese are descendants of the Areopagites. We came here during a heroic migration from Ilmara to Ansuland, thousands of years before the lactose intolerant Mount Reden Occidentals discovered this place. I know, babe. No. Those were scimitar wielding race losers of Sahrava, Izet, and Bashir, with their Himi servants. Big difference. The Areopagites were fasting and conquering while this happened. You never penetrated the western dunes. The Areopagites are sleek, long-headed. The Simonese are powerful, mesomorphic. The former is an immutable progenitor, unchanged since the super isola of Pericarnassus. Ancient brains rest in their slender skulls. The latter is perfected and adapting. Together they form the simeno Areopagite or Simeopagite super race. That is all. There are no more tip A races in the world. Pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the grad people have undergone for drinking al rul and smoking the degenerate tobacco herb and for eating potato. <laughs> they are microscopic. The Semeno Areopagite superstate will cover the entire remaining planetary crust, uninterrupted. From Holy Semenine to the Boreal Plateau of Katla, Type B are the unheroic races, amorphous non competitors of the great race. The Koikos and the Vacholier, they are mud colored people. Its leaders will be the genetic epitome of the Simonese and Areopagite stock, elected by nature, not the base inner spoilage called Demos. The Koiko, the countless micronationalities of Grad, are all inexplicably obsessed with Potat. The only thing they like more is dividing into microscopic ethnostates, like political amoeba. Then there is the Simino Koiki Chimera. Are you sure you wish to know of the Simino Koiki Chimera? It is not an aesthetic sight. This will never happen. The Simonese and the Koiko may have similar interbreeding problems as the Mosquito. We will never know precisely. No Simonese man could maintain an erection in the suffocating potato stench of a Koiko woman or Koika. Revacholians, halfway between Tip A and Racial Coldron. Too mixed to know right from wrong. You tried your degenerate little revolution, which was the single greatest failure committed by humans in our 82,000 year history on this planet. The revolution came to Ravachol from Grad in Zara's ridden potato carts. It is literally an illness, a prion disease that leaves the parietal and frontal lobe ridden with holes. A soft, sponge-like mass of dementia, hallucination, and paranoia. The revolution is fatal familial insomnia. A hereditary prion condition passed from the Koiko to the Occidentals. But not sexually. Probably through trade roots and potato acid, the prime component of the potato plant. 
pinkness is a racial quality that has to be earned through centuries of advanced ballistic warfare and cultural domination that the grad people have undergone for drinking al rul and smoking the degenerate tabac herb and for eating potato. Democratic ethnostates are microscopic. They breed genetic mediocrity. The Seminole Areopagite superstate will cover the entire remaining planetary crust, uninterrupted, from Holy Seminine to the Boreal Plateau of Katla. The mysteries of the people of this planet are a tragedy that has played out countless times over, like a fever dream of skin, hair, and bone. Wake up, naive Chespius. Enough of Tibet mediocrity. The heart that pumps the hemoglobin is mysterious, and so is its dark will. Enough of these personal matters. Have you been educated to all the Russell tip now? Tips, the F, are a museum of failed chimeric experiments and tragic maladaptations. They are tortured creatures waiting to be put to sleep. Your morbid interest in them worries me. It would be cruel to entertain ourselves with their deformities. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education on? Lesser races like the Mesquito, a grotesque mixture of a Mesque woman and a Seminese man. Only possible if the mother is Mesque and the father Seminese. The other way around, they fail to produce offspring. The Mesquito is born sterile, like a donkey. All they have left is to ride customized motor carriages with hydraulic suspension, listening to aggressive El Mariachi music to vent their impotent despair. You are right. You have misunderstood. You lack basic phylogenetic education. To an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish, like a ham sandwich. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an indistinct muddy color. And so is their skin. Unhealthy, sweaty, and ashen. Yes, to an untrained eye, the Koiko appear white and pinkish. Like a ham sandwich. But look into their eyes and you will see. They are of an indistinct color. And so is their skin, unhealthy, muddy, and ashen. You need to know both tips A and B to understand the context for the reckless genetic abandonment in the philo -caldron. Yes, it is cruel to entertain ourselves with the deformities of the earth. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education on? The Koiko, as you know, are very servile, especially when they meet the rich man. Racial scientists have toyed with the idea of crossing the Seminese with the Koiko to produce a super worker of Seminese strength and grad servility. That is understandable. Were there more fortunate tips you needed to be educated about? But enough. It is cruel to entertain ourselves with the deformities of Tipse F. Were there any able-bodied races you needed education on? You understand nothing. To solve the great race enigma, you have to first ask yourself, what is the race enigma? You have not even worded the mystery, let alone solved it. We will see. You need to internalize what you have heard here today, then return to me. This clarity does not come instantly. <laughs> Lost, though, buckled away at the last gate. This is why your upload group will never rise from the ashes. Now, I need to luxuriate in the private company of my babe. Leave me. There is nothing funky about them. There are three categories of race. Tip A, T 
type B and the vial CF raise called off pederasty. Which one do you need? I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tiber Vasholian. Your love for disco music and venereal disease and... <laughs> Look, babe, the disco dancing degenerate has run out of cocaine to shoot into his arms. This has made him short, fused, and impolite. Underneath the posturing, there is the red. Everyone can see that. It has little to do with the race enigma. Look, babe, the rich man has humiliated and emasculated this couple. He can only think in base materialist categories and feminine abstractions like money. Look, babe. The minion of law is also a racist, but his racism is basic and rote. He thinks he has solved the great race enigma by describing a rote mechanism of scientific competition. Look, babe, the petulant disco dissident thinks racial synthesis exists to rankle his sensibilities. In his shallow hall of mirrors existence, everything is insincere, even nature. Look, babe, the petulant rock and roll rebel thinks the racial synthesis exists to rankle his sensibilities. In his hall of mirrors existence, everything is insincere, even nature. Look, babe, when confronted with the harsh truth of his demise, the melancholic academician starts fiddling his own genitalia. His bald spot betrays that he is a compulsive masturbator. Look, babe. When confronted with the demise of his entire race, the bourgeois alcoholic degenerate focuses on gossip. Other people's lives are a refuge for him. From the burning race wreckage of his own. You could have used this opportunity to overcome your narrow, al rule ravaged identity. Instead of unlocking the race enigma, you attempted to add to it unsuccessfully. His rage is already played out on the stage of history as the grotesque tragedy of revolution. All it can accomplish now is impotent academic text and neurosyphilitic rock and roll melancholia. Impotent class warrior, I take pity on you. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad, like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. <laughs> Look, babe. The fossilized rock and roll rebel challenges me, a figure of authority. He is trying to reinstate his individualism with swear words taken from rock songs from the last century. Impotent subject of pop culture. I take pity on you. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad, like a little boy wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door very well. You may enter the door once. Our race conversation here has concluded. Degenerate, social democrat. I take pity on you. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad, like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. You think he is an old man, but inside he is a teenager who only sees himself in the mirror. Truth is standing in the eyes of his liberal clique. Organism is a spectacle for the RRC Radio A morning show. Take solace from the fact that these thoughts will never entirely leave your brain. They will be with you on the day you die. The only germ of heroism in your body. Now go. I have beauty and truth to discuss with my woman. It is. Beneath the veneer of academic jargon, the liberal theorist is a beast. A sexual maniac 
and a deprived nihilist. Life is a game to him. Words are meaningless. No one is accountable for anything. Nihilistic sex maniac. I take pity on your urges. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad, like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. The basic race education he received in high school has led him to think his phylum are the sole authors of race theory. An esoteric study reaching back to the ancient mass society of Pericarnassus over 4,500 years ago. Basic racist. I take pity on you. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad. Like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. Effeminate gossip mongrel. I take pity on your tabloid-driven urges. You clearly want to enter the harbor bad. Like a little boy who wants to go on the potty. I can press the button for you. It will open the door. <laughs> Anything for you, babe. Fascinating. The Revacholian degenerate shows signs of racial self-reflection. How did you accomplish this little feat? And, of course, you will not be able to free yourself from the yoke of rule. It is too late. It may be little to stop at this point. But still... If the Revacholian degenerate is capable of critical thought, he may still prove a race adversary. Why should I help my adversary? So it would seem, Thrall of Rul. I find myself at a crossroads. On one hand, this pathetic self-therapy has little to do with the great mystery of living organisms, the race enigma. That is not possible. The game of Shahmat you play against the rules tricks is unwinnable. The days, the weeks, the months will wear you out. The Occidental Aplo group is incapable of long-term lucid thoughts. Very well. You may enter once. Our conversation here has concluded. You will not. You cannot withstand the wasteland of reality. So it would seem, Thrall of Rul. On one hand, this pathetic self-therapy has little to do with the great mystery of living organisms. The race enigma. And, of course, you will not be able to free yourself from the yoke of Rul. It is too late. It may be lethal to stop at this point, but still, if the Revacholian degenerate is capable of critical thought, he may prove a race adversary yet. Was I mistaken to share the esoteric science with him? That is not possible. The game of Shahmat you play against the rules tricks is unwinnable. The days, the weeks, the months will wear you out. The Occidental Aplo group is incapable of long-term lucid thoughts. You will not. You cannot withstand the wasteland of reality. That is right. You cannot withstand the wasteland of reality. The words to the song have changed. Say I am a violent drunk. Our personal dynamic has changed. A little. Your race descent has temporarily halted, but you will fall again. The unpromising race pupil returns. <laughs> you are not Santiago. Santiago is not you. Even the frenically impaired can see this. Stop it. You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman. So it was. 
My unpromising race pupil entered the harbor and used my superior to give me orders. I salute your cunning and will remove the body from the tree with my bare hands. Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Inane popular culture lingo. It is intellectually uninteresting to sock anything to an infant such as you. You will not. You cannot withstand the wasteland of reality. That is right. You cannot withstand the wasteland of reality. This way, processed meat man. Don't worry, babe. This won't take long. Hmm. You want to return to the past? Walk away, little officer. I don't care about your impotent rumblings. They are boring me. Your need to steer every conversation towards your own persona is a sign of low self-esteem. Anything is possible. Just not for you. Yes, for you, I imagine it was. Don't think that I am now obliged to be part of your little growing spurt. It is not going anywhere. Do not think me introducing you to race science means I'm now part of your growing process. It does not look promising. You bested me in a violent physical confrontation. True but I don't owe you an intellectual one. You did best me in a violent physical confrontation, but I don't owe you an intellectual one. No. Your attempt to psychologically manipulate me has failed. It's time you return to your menial matters. (laughs) Babe, look. Scorched biomass is all that the rule left of his brain. Soon he will devolve into an androgynous bipedal, able to perform only the most instinctual of functions, ingest and defecate, like an overweight amoeba. Look, his ravaged brain is stuck between an imaginary world and ours. It's all fusing together. Soon he can tell the difference. That our bodies are temples built to elevate, facilitate, and withstand the volatile vastness of our souls? Yes, I have heard that. So, women, huh? No. Yes, she did. Yes, with great honors. The greatest, some say, a true modern ritual. The entire organization attended when she was given the honorary engraved paperweight. It was a tender day. My mother will never die. She retired with great honors. The greatest, some say, a true modern ritual. But you did. And then your testicles shrunk and retreated inside your rectum. Do you know who has absolutely no respect for this type of physiological metamorphosis? Women. They hate it. See you unfit for a spiritual connection. Women can make you stronger, but only if your lack of confidence does not get in the way first. And that's what you wanted to talk about? That you are a disturbed gender parity activist? And that's what you wanted to talk about? That you don't like women? And that's what you wanted to talk about? What is this really about? I'm going to do you a kindness, Poopa. I'm going to share a secret with you. Here is the secret. There is no love in the past, only the present. The past is made of static images. 
distorted memories, demented nostalgia. This, the present, with all its possibilities, innumerable its and misses, is far superior. It is a living organism. Look around you. Look at the advancements in the sexual sciences. All the novel techniques, accessories, preservatives, massage oils, lubrication salves, abortion clinics, and the women. Women who shave and are capable of understanding concepts like polyamory and coitus casualis. The coico and their promiscuity are at the forefront of all that. You're asking me to share the sacred techniques that I've gathered and internalized on my life journey with you, a stranger? Do not think the serenity of my mother's office makes me forget we are biological competitors. Albe is unevenly matched. You are more likely to get the coalition to sign over their warships than get these weapons of pleasure and control out of me. This knowledge never passes from a man to another man, not even from a father to his son. This path is to be taken in absolute solitude. We are life. Life is sexuality. Sexuality in competition with sexuality. The sexuality of other organisms. The point of any competition is to win. The future. In a biological sense, the man whose essence, whose genetic blueprint is passed on to the most hosts, down to the most generations, fulfills his biological purpose to the greatest extent. This is the love victory. Semen retention society. I told you, this is a simplification. Climax is not required for victory. In fact, it is discouraged. A true man retains his essence. It is far more masculine to pass on a blueprint of your mind and your spirit than your flesh. Women give birth to flesh, and men give birth to spirit. Spirit is immortal. Don't apologize. My women liked it. It is important to appear vulnerable sometimes. Vulnerability nurtures emotional contact. Emotional contact amplifies the ecstasies of sex. Like ivy, we are intertwined, weak and strong, man and woman, mother and child. <laughs> Observe. Like a peasant hoping to bed a noble woman. The ham sandwich is reaching straight for the advanced concepts. No humility, awareness, or respect. To comprehend time, you must possess at least a basic understanding of how reality works, what the rules are. The look of infinite astoundment in your eyes says you have no idea. The concepts you reach for are far beyond you, Koopa. Without the necessary vocabulary, you are only wasting my time. Educate yourself first. Talk to people and understand the basics. Hm. Manage to learn the reality rhythm, and next up is returning to the past? That surprises no one. And yet you still feel entitled to return to the past? Come back to me when you've mastered the rhizom. You don't have it in you. Be grateful for that. It saddens even me. The rule is a cruel master. <laughs> Personal? 
You mean the bays? Oh, I see. Perhaps we should talk in private. Come with me. Yes, I see. To the deepest caverns beneath La Royaume, where eyeless creatures, ignorant of light and warmth, lurk and sliver. <laughs> Don't panic, ham sandwich. That was a joke. We're going to my mother's office. A median amount of time. We can talk without the pedomorph. It's me and you this time. I am not going anywhere. And neither is my mother's office. The pedomorph. The pedomorph is not here. We don't need your friend. It's me and you this time. In fact, visual expression of individuality is something we always perceive differently. It's a generational chasm. <laughs> Spoken like a man defeated by love. Unable to face the harsh realities of nature. We are sky, butterflies, rhododendrons, rhinos, nature against nature. Love takes courage, courage to fight. Your agreement means nothing to me. You're a man defeated by love. It is plain to see. It is in your face, in your voice, in your heart. Love takes courage. You did not have enough. This defeatist talk of cooperation is why you have no future. It is also why you have no love. You had a little. Too little. That is why we are in my mother's office. You have come to me, seeking wisdom in the sexual arts. Do not waste this opportunity on sycophantic personality mirroring. It will serve you poorly in the great war of love. This is no time for vague generalities. There is something else on your mind. Ask the question you intended to ask or face your cowardice. Women, that is a lie you administer yourself. Like heart medicine. Go without it one day and your heart will stop. Renouncing the rule is already clearing the fog from your mind. Don't think I didn't notice. Men only want to reverse time for one reason. Love. I can barely hear your words through the voice of Valrul, but it speaks truth. Men only want to reverse time for one reason. Love. Men only want to reverse time for one reason. They say it's about honor, justice. Revenge, regret, redemption, and a plethora of false reasons. But further back, deeper in, it is always love that drives them. They say it's about honor, justice, revenge, regret, redemption, and a plethora of false reasons. But further back, deeper in, it is always love that drives them. We already established that. Tell me, what drives you to search for such fantastic measures? The only man worth being called a man, Father Jairzino. Father Jairzino made me hard, where my mother made me soft. Together, they made me complete. No, a welder. Let me say that again. It is the balance between soft and hard that made me complete. So he did what a man must. He became a counterweight of iron. Through scarcity, assises, discipline, and respectful distance every father should have for his son. Father Jairzino was very wise. He realized that if the tender touch of my mother wasn't opposed, I would turn into a complete pussy. I didn't become what I am by succumbing to the pleasure-seeking demands of my physical body. 
You, however, clearly did. And that's more than I need to close this argument. Yes, I inherited my genetic makeup from Father Jairzino. I am an evolution of him. He is immortalized in my essence, even after his physical body expires. <laughs> The stereotypical worries of a traumatized social worker. The reality does not correspond to your personal trauma. And if it did, I would welcome it. A good fight with Father Jairzino would be a great honor. Because Father Jairzino is my father. And his name is Jairzino. No, he does not. But it doesn't matter. I shouldn't care, and I don't, what he thinks. I am myself, not him. This is how he taught me. I am merely offering a small glimpse of functional family dynamics. Something you were clearly deprived of. Don't think now that you've divorced yourself from the rule you're fit to give me life advice. I can't see or hear the great example you're setting over the deafening roar of your copilot, Al Rul. This denial does not serve your spirit. You are like a dog with its tail between its legs. It is visible to all. It is visible to women, and the reason why you haven't found a worthy mate or why the worthy mate was stolen from you. This is because you still carry the signs of a violent past. You are like a dog with its tail between its legs. It is visible to all. It is visible to women, and the reason why you haven't found a worthy mate, or why the worthy mate was stolen from you, you don't have to remember. You are like a dog with its tail between its legs. It is visible to all. It is visible to women. And the reason why you haven't found a worthy mate, or why the worthy mate was stolen from you. This is a weakness I can empathize with. You have my pity. Take solace in it. Yes, I have always liked this place. It is my favorite. When I was a kid, I used to come here and wait for my mother to finish her work. And the couch. The couch is very comfortable, even though it is very small. There is no couch like this one. Great times were had here. Filling in the great coloring book of the seminine flora and fauna. The carrion flowers and the monotrams. The mangrove forests and the megabats. I am not surprised. You are like the runt of the litter, abandoned, incapable of nurturing a woman's love. Our mothers are the ones who teach us to receive affection from the opposite sex. A bond you have clearly not experienced. The greatest. Instead, you have developed this unhealthy obsession with the past. Standing before me, hoping to turn back time. This is not the answer. Reinvent yourself from defeat. You are trying to insinuate something. This impotent psychological manipulation does not work on me. Speak up, Poopa. No. It turns me on. Your mind is unable to capture the nuances of this particular situation. It exceeds the limits of your emotional intelligence and your genetic imagination. Do not even try. Poopa. I belong to the SRS. And voluntary offspring production, chimeric or regular, is not an issue for me. The Semen Retention Society. It does not surprise me that you know nothing about it. 
Masturbateurs Anonymous is probably an organization you're more familiar with. The SRS is a closed group of strong-willed individuals who have dedicated themselves to building up strategic semen reserves. It takes iron will and razor-sharp focus, far beyond your spiritual potential. No, I am not. This is an oversimplification, but yes, I just told you, you don't. It's not meant for a feeble and traumatized mind like yours. If discussing bodily functions disturbs you, we can talk about something else. Something that corresponds better with your emotional immaturity. Only after years and years of emotional, psychological, and spiritual power lifting can a man start looking into joining the SRS. I just told you, it's not meant for an al rule enthralled mind like yours. It's nothing to be proud of, Poopa. Hysterical masturbation is but one of the many illnesses of occidental civilization. I am not surprised. You are like the rent of the litter, abandoned, incapable of nurturing a woman's love. Our mothers are the ones who teach us to receive affection from the opposite sex, a bond you have clearly not experienced. Instead, you have developed this unhealthy obsession with babes. Any babes. Mine included. This is not the answer. It's not too late yet to change the course. Give up on our rule, then go even further. Reinvent yourself from defeat. It's not too late yet to change the course. You have already given up on our rule. Now go further. Reinvent yourself from defeat. No. It's a biological condition where a male specimen is born without his testicles. Happens all over the world. And now it has happened here. In my mother's office. Under my watchful eye. Shame. It would have been an interesting topic. You use vulgar humor to distract yourself from the pain that women have caused you. The impotent rage at their promiscuity will not heal you, and it repels women. Desperation, wishful thinking, confusion. No woman wants to create a lasting psychosexual bond with a man enthralled to his biological impulses. It does not surprise me that the complexities of the psychosexual bond between a man and a woman remain beyond your reach. Instead, you continue to idealize the flawed and hallucinatory relationship between your parents hoping to correct their mistakes. <laughs> Continuous denial. Your lack of psychosexual self-awareness does not surprise me. Something tragic must have happened to you in the past for you to deny it so vigorously. You have to shed this infantile shell if you ever wish to find a worthy mate. You are not fit to make assumptions about Father Jairzino. His ability to form emotional bonds with his offspring was exemplary. Teaching self-control, discipline, assises, and respect was an act of love greater than anything that you or your pharmacotherapeutic culture can come up with. Yes, your favorite topics. What about them? I am just stating the facts. Your traumatized descent is in plain sight. No, I am not interested in welding. Clearly, it is impossible for you to shed your neurotic obsession. This wailing for the past is a task unfit for men. It is better left for widows mourning their husbands 
and for mentally ill communists mourning their commune. If you want advice on babes, or the mysteries of life, or even on Revachol, look forward. To escape your defeated state, you need to move forward. On to future victories. I am not a traditional traditionalist. Life on this planet does not move backwards. The ivy moves forwards, covering the whole door. The flowers grow outwards, covering the whole meadow. Nothing grows against time and space. Only along its ley lines can mature progress. It seems to me you are in need of a warning. Here it is. It is absolutely possible to return to the past. You just need to take a ticket to Seregli Island, the southernmost of the Semenan Archipelago, also known as Ile de Fontom, and walk into Pale. Let it dither and rot your mind. Then you can marinate forever in your irreversible defeat. While race enemies laugh at your motionless gab corpse. You want to return to the past and you don't even know what you're facing? Maybe it's for the best. It is too late to explain the intricacies of the reality resum if the opportunity to learn its fundamental terms has passed to you. Treat the pale as a mystery. Dark. Repulsive and surprisingly mundane, like curdling milk, or a mold in nectarine. Or go and see it for yourself. Watch it rise from the sand and the sky taking coral reefs in its bosom. There is no catch. You will get what you want. The rule is a cruel master, but it is not pale. Pale takes your mind and rejects the flesh. It is capricious and terrifying, like a virgin. You will lose your courage before her face. Go have a look. The white-haired protein mass at the intersection. A lorry driver. Impossible to miss her if you're even a half-decent cop. Before you go looking for tickets, I suggest you see what it does to a man. The rule is a cruel master, but it is not pale. Pale takes your mind and rejects the flesh. It is capricious and terrifying, like a virgin. You will lose your courage before her face. An empty vessel the mind has deserted. A husk no longer inhabited by the consciousness. Biological waste. Yes, our little meeting has finished. It's time to leave my mother's office and return to our jobs. I hope this has been illuminating to you. And remember, what happens in my mom's office stays in my mom's office. Quiet contemplation ends, biological rivalry resumes. I have returned with the hands on which. Look, he is alive. I have not harmed this little cop. You need to be more forceful. Talk to her again about the only thing that still matters to this empty vessel. Pale. Go talk with her again. Ask her about Pale. See what a relentless obsession with the past does to a man. This one is not like the others. Go find her. See what a relentless obsession with the past does to a man. A piece of advice? Stop fighting time and face the real antagonist. Face yourself, Poopa. It's a showdown every man must go through. We are done here. And remember, what happens in my mother's office stays in my mother's office. Quiet contemplation ends, biological rivalry resumes. And yet you're still obsessed with turning back time? 
After you've seen what it does to a man, it's simple. I am just not interested in your impotent obsession with the past. And remember, what happens in my mom's office stays in my mom's office. Quiet contemplation ends, biological rivalry resumes. We are done here. And remember, what happens in my mother's office stays in my mother's office. Quiet contemplation ends, biological rivalry resumes.